Hey guys, welcome back to Minecraft, and uh, we've got some big building to do today. Now, the last couple of videos have always been me showing and telling. Well, this is a little bit of both. So, let's get ourselves going, and let's head ourselves out of the house. I've been doing some decorating. Move the kitchen over here. Living room area. Still need to finish this area, but we have a bathroom now. And the bedroom is started up. But our big build project is a fairly sizable one. And thankfully it's daytime because you'll get to see it. I do need to chop these down first. I need lots of this. And when I say lots, you will understand why. Whenever I find out where it's all gone. Huh. Where did I swear, the bamboo, whenever I knock it down, it's so hard to find. I'm not looking that way on purpose because I want you guys to get the full, should we say, impression of this. Should have probably collected more scaffolding ahead of time, shouldn't I? Yeah. Okay. Quickly knock some of this together. I got some blocks of string from friends, which was necessary. Oh, yeah. That's two stacks. That should be good. We will need this. Now, the elytra you see on my back is also very necessary for today's activities. Because, uh, yeah, we're going to have to go flying. So, why are we building? And what are we building? Ta-da! Yes. Welcome to the bridge across the entire valley. This thing is insane. Look. Elytra myself back up again. Yeah. <laughs> Let's drop down a little bit and heads up. It's big. It's real big. It takes a lot of scaffolding. As I fail to fly around this thing properly. Let's go for a landing, shall we? Yes, this thing is massive. We are about 60, 70 blocks up from the ground below. And as you can see, this thing uses an exorbitant amount of scaffolding. Because I've got to basically build this thing by hand. This is a completely original design. Um, we're doing an arch and pillar uh, bridge design here. Kind of Romany, classical. I'm thinking like Second Empire of Tamriel sort of timeline. With my whole kind of general Skyrim-y vibe to this whole area. And we're building arches. We've got the road deck on top. We've got the pillars here. Trying to put as much detail in it as possible, but it is also massive. So it's definitely taking up some time and uh, construction material. Anyway, we need to get back up top, so we There we go. Now, today's work involves actually building this thing. And there's a lot to build. Let's get rid of some of these blocks. Now, the blocks, why are there blocks here? Well, this is obviously in survival mode and it's hard survival mode which means it's uh, a little bit more challenging especially with the mobs than obviously regular would be and it's definitely harder than doing this in creative if i was in creative i'd fly around i'd be hovering off the ground i'd throw this thing together in no time i'd just go brr, 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 blocks everywhere no all of the village here and this and this is literally made in survival now, this will not go all the way across. There will be an actual wooden section in the middle. I want this to look like a derelict, ancient, abandoned bridge. I'll be doing some decorating of it as well, and overgrowth, and undergrowth, etc. before we are finished. However, it needs to first be at least built to an appropriate length. So we're going to need at least one more pillar. Probably this side of the river here, coming up for us now. And then we will actually have the span we want. We're going for about three pillars per side, uh, with the middle part broken. So... What you're going to get to see today is actually me building and talking about how I do this sort of structure and the processes I have to go through to make it and all the work that goes into doing something of this size. And it is extensive. You have to mine a lot of materials to build anything like this. And of course, this does mean, yeah, I have actually had to mine all this stuff. There is no other way to do it. I've got to collect it myself. And I like that. It makes whatever you build feel much more rewarding. As I've already cleared out a stack of bricks could i've done this in multiple different materials like i do things like that structure there where i'm using stone cobble mossy cobble uh, mossy stone and 
stone, etc., bricks. I could. But it would take me ten times as long. Ten times as long. And considering you're often going to see this from a distance, whilst I will have probably eventually do it to the road deck up here, this four wide strip along the top, and these top sections where you're going to see them up close, um, and maybe some of the bottom parts, you're just not going to see a lot of it that close by, so it's going to be really difficult to do that. So we're just adding a little bit of crenellation and detail as we go along, which helps just add a little bit more flavour to what we're building. And probably going to talk a little bit about how I actually go about thinking of these considerations. So I'm using these step pieces not because they're steps, but because they add a little, little detail to look here. And it just adds a little bit of difference and something to notice that is unusual. Now, obviously keeping it the same width all the way along would also have problems because it'd be boring. So we have these little kind of areas for pedestrians to step into whilst wagon goes past. Add some width, add some interest to the whole build and gives us space. Now, there are some little doubling up moments where you get this, but you won't see that from a distance. So it makes all the sense in the world. Now, that is us built up to length here. And if I do this, I get to run across the other side, which is largely already fully built. And you'll see here, these are the actual pillars. They are hollow, just because it saves me 4x4 four four of brick, which is a lot of material when you get to the actual brass tacks of things. Now, sunset's about to come, so we're going to come back once it's morning, and we're going to continue with actually building one of the second parts of these arches and get on with that. So we are back and it is morning again in the world and I've thrown a bit more, two more pillars out in the scaffolding now this in its own right it takes a lot of scaffolding, an exorbitant amount of scaffolding in fact. Um, <laughs> it's literally a process of as I go along waiting for it to basically reach the end, the end of the length which is about six blocks and just dropping it down till it hits the ground. Now I'm out of scaffolding now and I've only got halfway up there, it's ridiculous. You'll notice here, of course, if I have a tree, I have to place something on top of the tree to plant because tree leaf blocks will not actually support scaffolding. And I don't want to destroy the trees. So I just stick some bits of wood on top. Now we're going to build the other side of this arch here right now, uh, which means we've already got the center point done. So we're going to do the mirror half here to where the pillar will be. Now, most of this pillar is not completed yet, but it will be. Not a big deal. Arch is more important. So we're going to get ourselves some stone brick here. Now we know we're going to mirror this so we need to put these on the far side of here like that with bricks behind them to add a length and they'll need to be brick either side there and then we put the first of the actual step downs one offset to give a bit more length and a bit more curve to the structure. Now we've done that we'll come around the side here put two down same on this side. We can just drop down here, plant one, get alongside so we can place it the right way around, and boom, we have our next piece. Now, as you'll see here, this is the actual last one where it's one brick above the actual width, because the next one down will be a block to add that same curvature at the bottom side here. So we'll go around to this side inside the scaffolding. And as you can tell, I'm wearing my elytra because. Yeah, falling off this is a problem. But with an elytra, it is less of a problem. And I like less of a problem. Less of a problem hurts less. Now, getting these bottom ones under here will be an actual challenge. So what I'm going to have to do is I've got to go down here and I'm out of scaffolding. So this is going to be an exercise in balance to see if I can do this. I can't reach from that side, so we've got to go back up. See if we can get around here. Actually, I can now because I can just do that. Boom. And we have our bottom edge of the scaffold. So behind here, we'll go down the actual... We always leave a gap in the centre make it hollow because it's more convenient that way. Nice and easy. So this is where our actual pillar is going to go down from. So we'll put across the block there because that's going to be the edge of our building now. Now I know that here, uh, my tower is one block in front of where we need to build. So I'll show you how the tower comes together. Why am I climbing down? I can just fly down. It's much more convenient this way. <gasps> cool. I need this. I've been smelting so much stuff I have none left. 
Welcome to survival building. You've got to actually do the building yourself. So, I've forgotten where I'm building now. Oh, it's here. So, it should be this row here where this dirt is. So, I'm not wrong tool, but it gets it out of the way faster. One, two, three, four. Now, because it's an uneven bottom, what I tend to do is I tend to build it up. So, we have a nice even footing. So, the bottom is always the same material before we start doing the side fill to add a bit of texture. Now, not got many bricks left. We'll have to go and get some more. Uh, welcome to how this world works. But what I will do is throw these up like this. Now, obviously, these two side pieces will have something in them. Brick. But the side pieces, we just throw some wall sections in. Which adds a bit of variety. Now... That's a hole down there. We don't really want a hole, so. We'll just fill this part up for at least now so we have a solid base. Which gives us, as you see here, a stone pillar to build from like the rest. So as we go up here, just lovely degraded holes in the world from the Caves of Glyphs updates. We will find the base of spare scaffolding. Don't mind if I do. The base of... Another tower around here, if I can find the way to it. Isn't surrounded by waterfalls. There's one there. Now, I should probably knock one of these down, because I don't really need this end anymore. But I will show you why I do in just a second. See here we are, the tower pillar. And if I knock a hole in it, you will see it is literally just, yeah, keep the mobs out. No problem. Where did I put those pieces? Where'd they go? Could have sworn I had... I just... Oh, I dug fence post. Oh. I'm an idiot. Never mind. Bit too overzealous with the fireworks, but it gets me up here. Which is the important part. Now, I need to look down and work out where the hell my scaffolding is. It's right there. Bonk. So, this looks a little bit bland compared to over here. Where we have... There we go. Decoration. It's not a lot. It's a little bit of crenellation and we have it dripping down a bit more right in the centre of where these little carriageway steps are. I've obviously got rid of some of this already on this side, so... We're going to repeat that over here. I don't have any more bricks, do I? Never mind. We'll take the opportunity for a little quick village tour here from the air. Little riverside house there. Ooh, scaffolding. Little rivers. This is one being built. I need to fill in the eaves, of course. Simple little kind of Norse-style house. Nothing too crazy. Some glass and windows. Central fireplace and a hole in the roof. Fill in those eaves. This will be done. Small little hovel house for somebody. The bigger house, of course. You've already seen that one. You've seen the inn. Just simple. Nothing crazy. This one as well. Nothing ridiculous, but it does the job. It's just a nice, small little decorative house to flesh out the village. Make things look a bit more busy. So, we are running... Oh, no, no, I'm good for now. I'm not good for now. Yeah, I'll never have enough of this. Hopefully I can pull some out as I go, but I also want to leave it mostly in place so I can access all the areas of the bridge. Because you never know, I'm going to find something I want to change. At some point, I'm going to have to get to it, so it means I need to leave a lot of the actual scaffolding in place rather than moving it along with me as I go. If I was building a finished design, I could just, you know, move it with me and use a quarter of what I've got here, but I can't. Okay, that gives us some stone there. Just chuck it in here, make some stone bricks. We're nowhere near enough here. And you'll soon understand the pain of building anything this scale. You tend to end up with large holes in the world. Like, this was a corridor at one point that went down here and down there. About the same size as this. It's a bit bigger now. Because I need the cobblestone. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it disappears fast. Quickly grab some more of this. That should give me just about a stack of scaffolding should help us. Grab a baked potato. Helps to have a, a, uh, a calum around the 
Potato Fairy. Him being Irish, of course, it's a perfect fit. He came around to everyone's houses and dropped us off. Chest full of baked potatoes. Not the quickest nourishing food, but you know what? When I can't be asked to go finding food because I'm too busy building, it will do. Right, we need to be down here because we're crenellating stuff. Okay. So I go into here. I knock two down there. And I hit a upside down step. One in each of the middles. Now this should be a simple case of going over here. And I believe doing the same. Probably going to be wrong. Nope, I'm an idiot. It's two. Because I put one in there just to fill the gap. Because obviously it's next to the pillar. But every one of these should be a gap of two. Which means the last one will be right here. Perfect. So we do that there. Then we have the one. Either side of that where it should normally be two. It's so nerve wracking going sideways on scaffolding this high up. It makes you a little bit kind of... Oh god. I'm going to die. And for somebody who's got a crippling fear of heights, this is a really difficult project. But I really saw a bridge in this valley. An ancient kind of architecture style of bridge. Sometimes I've gone one too many on the gaps and I end up with a gap like that. It's two. No one's going to notice. It's going to be fine. In fact, it looks a bit more organic that way. Yeah, I just filled that in. Okay. Two. Stay on the right place here. Okay, now if I judge this based on the design I have here, these come in either side of the little recess. So I can just go as the recess will basically be here. Because that's where the step's going to go down. I can just go boom, 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 boom. So that will be where it needs to be, which means this can get filled in with actual material because that's where the top of the area will be the top of the pillar will start like this and it's night time again okay so we're back up and it's morning again wonderful how time flies doesn't it so as we mentioned this second pillar over here will go this way and it just drops down there nice and easy i can run around the other side i can do that part as well so this should be bricks to here not there be so careful not to fall off this thing. I am actually kind of tingling with terror every time I'm on top of this thing. It is actually scaring me. Um, but I want to do it because it's a huge project. It's something that I can really consider an accomplishment in Minecraft. No, it's not the most well-designed, beautiful bridge in the universe. But you know what? It pleases me. I like it a lot. And the Elisha does alleviate a lot of the fear of being up here. Because holy crap, if I didn't have this, I'd be terrified. Ow! Falling down a hole. No, I would be genuinely terrified. So, literally here, we'll just fill these top ends in this way. So, we essentially end up building two, uh, four brick amount of bricks already. God, yeah, that's great, isn't it? I want to make it even at least a little bit. So, this side is filled up as well, at least by four. There we go. So, we'll go up like this. So, we have the fences on the side. And then we have the bricks on the ends. I wanted to go mine a ton of cobblestone for this. But uh, that is for, as they would say, another day. Now, before I go anywhere, and let's go take a look at how this thing looks now. We've opened up a bit more of the space. Let's find a nice tree to sit on. That'll do. Look at that. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. So we fill out another tower here. Which will take us out to about, about this far within a bit of arch. We'll have a bit of arch here, a bit of arch here. Both ends will be broken and there'll be wood in the middle, kind of bridging the gap, shall we say. And probably some bits repaired in the pillars as they go down. But this is a monumentally big project. And from a distance, it looks rounded, it looks smooth. It looks like a really well-built piece of engineering, which it's not. It's completely cobbled together crap. But I've had a valley... The dirt is so I lined it up, of course. That's why I put that there. Is so both sides were equal. Because otherwise it would be the most terrifying and horrifying thing in the world. Is if I got to the halfway point and it was off by one. Wouldn't it? Yeah. And considering I didn't want to build it all the way across. This makes more sense. So, yeah, folks. 
bridges are fun. I'm absolutely in love with doing this project. It is crazy huge. And so far, this has been like three days work. So thank you for watching. And I will see you next time when we probably will be doing the wooden part in the middle. Bye.